In this video, we're going to be talking about AFL 23 and how the visuals, atmosphere and overall presentation of the game can be improved in future titles. Now I know there's still a lot of improvements needed when it comes to gameplay and game modes, but there's been more than enough discussion around all that, so we'll focus on a different aspect of the game. AFL 23 is by far the best looking AFL game we've ever had, but there's still room for improvement. Let's start off with weather, and in particular, dynamic weather. Basically, this means that the weather can change over the course of the game. So a game that starts in the rain can clear up and be sunny as the game goes on. Not only does this add realism to the feel of the game, but it also has the potential to impact gameplay, as slippery conditions can dry up, allowing you to change how you play. I've noticed there is an option for hot weather conditions in the game. I don't know what difference this makes, but it's a cool idea that playing games in hot weather could have an effect on gameplay, maybe by having played stamina levels go down quicker. I'd also love to see an option for genuine heavy rain, like a real downpour that can affect visibility and add an extra layer of challenge. I think it was AFL EVO 1 that had some great heavy rain weather effects that they unfortunately patched out, but it would be cool to see something like that in AFL 23. Another little touch from older AFL games that I'd love to see make a return is grass and dirt stains on the players in wet weather games. The old PS2 games had this and it's another one of those little touches that just makes the game look that much more realistic. The game would also benefit from a day-night cycle, one that actually transitions games that start in the afternoon and end in the evenings. What's weird is that Big Ant have this in all their other sports games, so it's surprising that it isn't in this one. Up next is stadium lighting. I think shadows could use a lot of work, particularly in the upper decks of the bigger stadiums. Adelaide Oval is a perfect example of a stadium that is way too dark in those upper decks, especially during night games. I'd also love to see some stadium-specific lighting, for example the roof of Optus Stadium is usually lit up in the colours of the home team. These are little details but they can go a long way to adding realism to the look of the game. And it's the same idea with the stadium scoreboard graphics. While we don't see the actual big screens in the stadium very often during gameplay, it makes the game look so much more realistic to have the actual scoreboard graphics that are used at the grounds in real life. AFL EVO 2 added this and it was another small detail that made a big difference. Let's take a look at the pre-game build up. For this one I've put together this clip of a few small adjustments that could be made to just improve the pre-game. A very good evening, I'm Anthony Hudson. It's great to have you with us at Optus Stadium. We've been looking forward to this contest between Fremantle and Essendon. The players are ready to charge onto the ground. Joined by Daniel Harford. Great to have you along, Half. How do you see this one unfolding? Pleasure to be here, Hutto. No one would know who's going to win this match. We'll see two sides who have their weaknesses, of course, but both are also very capable of playing high-pressure, skillful footy. It'll be interesting to see who can maintain that for longer. Fair enough, Half. Thanks for that. Excitement is building for this one. The crowd already making plenty of noise as the captains come together. Draper wins the first tap. Now let's talk about crowds and stadium atmosphere. I think the game does a good job of getting the atmosphere right at smaller grounds like some of the AFLW or state league grounds, but it leaves a little to be desired in the big AFL stadiums. There's a real lack of atmosphere, especially in close games. If there's only a goal the difference in the fourth quarter of a real game, the crowd are making a ton of noise. This isn't the case in AFL 23, and it almost feels like the crowd aren't really paying attention. This also applies to big games like finals. If the home team scores a goal in the open 
opening minute of a big final. The crowd should go nuts. My main problem with the crowd is the unnatural flow. If you watch a real game of footy, the crowd sort of ride the wave of the game. If the home team is building up a nice passage of play towards goal, the crowd will build in anticipation and let out a sigh if it falls apart. In AFL 23, the crowd have a real stop-start nature to their cheering that only happens when the goal is scored. There's also this weird awkward silence after a goal when the crowd stop cheering. He's usually very accurate, and that was no exception. Great play. This is unless you're playing as Gold Coast, who have their own goal-scoring sound effect that they use in reality at their home games. Runs in and bangs it home. That's a bit of a freebie. You can't afford to turn the ball over like that. Something like this or the crowd chants from AFL EVO 2 would go a long way to adding some atmosphere to the game. Another small touch that makes the game feel more immersive is having some music or announcements over the loudspeakers at the stadium. A lot of sports games do this, but the first example I remember of this was in Ashes Cricket 2009. Beautiful timing. Whoa, well, what about that? What a shot that was. Six. This over is proving to be quite expensive. You can hear that background music that sounds like it's coming from the stadium speakers. It just adds to the experience. Let me know what you think could improve AFL 23's presentation in the comments below and I'll see you next time.